Hello and welcome to Sports Fan Entertainment. We are just minutes away from the beginning of the 2018 NFL season, so I must come on here and give you my official win-loss predictions for each and every team. We will be back Friday to do playoff predictions. We will be back Saturday to do award predictions, but today it is win-loss predictions in my 32 teams in 32 days season previews. I gave you win-loss predictions, but I always said they're not finished until I say they're finished. Now they're finished. These are the official win-loss predictions. They are down in the description box below. If you're lazy, they are on the screen now, and let's talk about them. AFC East New England Patriots 12 and four. Yes, I think Brady's going to regress a little bit, but damn it, they still have Bill Belichick. They're still the Patriots, 12 and four for them. Miami Dolphins, four and 12. I'm sorry, man. I think Ryan Tannehill's time in Miami might be coming to an end. I'm not excited about this football team right now. Danny Amendola, you're trading him. You got him instead of having Jarvis Landry years prior. I'm not excited at all. Kenyon Drake's going to be good, but I think that's going to be the only thing in Miami this year. Buffalo Bills, 5-11. and 11. Yes, he made the playoffs last year at 9-7, and seven, but Tyrod Taylor is gone. He was a winning quarterback, a guy that was able to hold the fort. Now you're moving to Nathan Peterman, okay, who you tried to play again and again and again last year. And he stunk and he stunk and he stunk and he stunk. Get him out of my face. Josh Allen's gonna come in at some point, but he's gonna be a rookie and a very volatile rookie at that. 5-11 for the Bills. New York Jets, 6-10. Yes, they're going to be improved, but Darnold, although I like him and I do think he's going to have a good year, he's going to have his struggles. He's going to be very turnover prone. It's going to be hard to win games early for him. It's going to be uh, similar to the rookie year of Jameis Winston where you're going to see a lot of upside, also some downside, 6-10 for the New York Jets. AFC North, Baltimore Ravens, 8-8. Eight and eight. Look, this is a playoff contender for sure, but I'm not, again, fully buying into Joe Flacco, and I'm definitely not a fan of Lamar Jackson rookie year either. We saw in the preseason he still has the struggle throwing the football, although he's very dynamic running it. So because the quarterback situation isn't quite there, only 8-8 eight and eight for the Baltimore Ravens. Cincinnati Bengals, 9-7, and seven, making the playoffs as the wild card. I think the Bengals will return to the playoffs. I like the way their defense is forming right now. John Ross on offense looks like he's ready to go, and and Andy Dahl's looking pretty damn good right now. Give me the Bengals at 9-7. and seven. Cleveland Browns, 3-13, and 13, man. I'm not a fan of Hugh Jackson. Hopefully they can fire this guy mid-season, early season. Hopefully by the end of the damn season, he stinks. And this was exemplified throughout Hard Knocks. This guy really sat down Baker Mayfield and said, Baker, well, you've done a great job. You've done everything we've asked you to do. So I want to congratulate you. You're going to be the backup quarterback. Get him out of my face, Hugh Jackson, and the Browns go 3-13. Pittsburgh Steelers, 12-4. and four. Yes, Le'Veon Bell has not shown up yet. He will eventually, and I think very soon. And without him, their schedule is not too difficult in the first couple of games, so they'll be fine. Give the Steelers at 12-4. and four. AFC South, Indianapolis Colts, 7-9 and nine for them. Yes, Andrew Luck is back, but he's going to be a little rusty, and the Colts' entire roster is not going to be good enough to make up for that. We saw that last season as they went 4-12. and 12. Luck brings a three-win improvement, which is very significant, but not enough to compete for the playoffs throughout the entire season. Houston Texans, 7-9. I'm sorry. I'm not buying it to Deshaun Watson. I think he's a bit fraudulent. I call him Defraud Watson. I think he's going to regress to the mean this season, and we're going to see the Texans team that we saw last season in terms of struggling a bit offensively, not being able to consistently move the football with their offensive line and the running back situation not being very good right now, and also their wide receivers outside of the top two. There's just not any depth on this football team. That's a problem for me, especially offensively. So give me 7-9 for the Houston Texans. Tennessee Titans, 10 and 6, making the playoffs and winning the AFC South. You can call me biased all you want. We went 9 and 7 last year with horrible coaching, getting better coaching. And now, had a great draft class in Rashad Evans and Harold Landry, add in Malcolm Butler. This is a 10 and 6 Tennessee Titans team. Jacksonville Jaguars, 10 and 6 as well. And I have them making the playoffs as a wild card, though. I think they're going to lose twice to the Tennessee Titans. They did last year. Looks like the Titans have their number, but going 10 and 4 against everyone else, still being very good. Have them winning week one against the Giants, but Blake Bortles will still hold them back, especially now that Marquise Lee is out for the year. Move on to the AFC West. Denver Broncos, 7 and 9. I think they will compete for the playoffs. I just want to make sure if Case Keenum is going to be the Case Keenum of last year. If he is, the Broncos. Broncos, I think, could win the AFC West outright, but I'm not quite sold yet. It's only 7-9 for them. Kansas City Chiefs 10-6 winning the AFC West. Yes, I said the Chargers would win the AFC West in my season previews, but I always told you that was not definite. I wasn't there yet. 
The Chiefs show me more. Patrick Mahomes look ready to go. I'm expecting over 4,000 passing yards for him, over 22 passing touchdowns for him, and a great year for him, and he has the weapons to do so. They're going to be firing on all cylinders in Kansas City, giving the Chiefs to win the division at 10-6. and six. LA Chargers 9-7, and seven, but missing the playoffs. I have the Bengals making it over the Chargers. Now, who knows how the tiebreakers are going to work out, okay? We right now have more faith than the Bengals, who have shown recently that they can go to the playoffs. Andy Dalton, although he's worse than Phillip Rivers, has shown that lately. So, I'm buying into that. I'm buying into the Bengals. I don't think the Chargers are quite ready yet. Oakland Raiders 5-11. and 11. Look, you trade away Khalil Mack. Your defense is going to struggle, period. I mean, you thought your defense was bad last year. Get ready for this. 5-11. John Gruden, what are you doing? Move on to the NFC. Dallas Cowboys 7-9. I do not like how the offense is looking right now. Wide receivers, Michael Gallup. I'm supposed to be excited about Michael Gallup. Come on. Uh, Blake Jarwin and, and, and Jeff Swain as your tight ends? No. Offensive line is currently in flux. Travis Frederick, where is he? We don't know. Will he play? We don't know. Will they move the ball consistently down the field? I don't see it. Only 7-9 for the Dallas Cowboys. New York Giants 6-10. Yes, Saquon Barkley is going to help this team, but their defense is not going to be as good as it was two years ago. Last year, it should be, but the offense is still going to be a little bit shaky as Eli Manny continues to get old. I can't buy into it yet, and the NFC is so tough. Only 6-10 for the Giants. 6-10 for the Redskins as well. I like the Redskins, but man, again, the NFC is so damn tough. I see a lot of teams going 6-10, 7-9 in the NFC, but they would have went 8-8 eight eight or 9-7 in the AFC. I think the NFC is the Western Conference of the NBA for the NFL this year, right? I think it's just going to be so difficult. So, only 6 to 10 for the Redskins after the injury to Darius Geis. With Darius Geis, I would have had them 8-8+. Eight eight plus. Philadelphia Eagles, 10-6. and six. So only 10-6 and six for them. Look, I look at the Carson Wentz injury, and it concerns me because although Nick Foles played great in the playoffs, won the Super Bowl, that was great. We're seeing the preseason, some issues there. The offense isn't gelling the way we'd like. He looks like he's returning to the Nick Foles of all. There was a reason he was a backup quarterback. I have them losing tonight to the Atlanta Falcons, and I think that's going to be the first of a couple losses to start the season. Only 10 and 6 for the Eagles, but still making the playoffs, still being a, a Super Bowl contender indeed. NFC North start with the Green Bay Packers, 10 and 6, making the playoffs as a wild card. I like the Packers, but I want to see how the rookies perform. Jair Alexander, Josh Jackson, their two quarterbacks they drafted this year. How will they perform with hold down those quarterback spots. I need to see that first before I go all in. And look, I think the NFC South, NFC North is going to be the toughest division in football, so I have to limit the amount of wins I'm giving out in this division. Chicago Bears 9-7, making the wild card. I'm buying into it. I have them 9-7, missing the playoffs before the Khalil Mack trade, but now with the Khalil Mack trade, let me give them some props. Let's have them making the playoffs now. I think he's going to push them over the edge. I hope the offense is there, but it should be with new head coach Matt Nagy and the growth of Mitchell Trubisky. Minnesota Vikings 12-4. and four. Yes, this is the NFC North. It's very tough, but look, the Vikings should be able to get wins elsewhere pretty much every single uh, game outside of their division. I think they might win. Okay, so I think they'll be fine and maybe go 3-3-4 three and three, four in their own division. So 12-4 and four for the Minnesota Vikings. NFC South, Atlanta Falcons 11-5. I really like the Falcons here. This year as a dark horse Super Bowl contender, but I think most people are starting to realize now, dude, they're stacked. As long as they can go back to the offense they were under Kyle Shanahan, and you don't have to go up, go back to that extent. Just go up to 85, 90% of that, and we're really talking about the Falcons being true Super Bowl contenders. New Orleans Saints only 8-8. Eight and eight. I know this is shocking, but again, look around the NFC people. It is tough right now. I mean, we're talking about the Bears are going to be improved, the Lions still in the picture. Some are going to argue that the Giants and Cowboys will be better than I have them being. It's going to be tough, people. Only 8-8. Eight eight. We're aggression for Drew Brees. This is what I see. Ten Bay Buccaneers 5-11. and 11, Starting 0-3 without Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston comes back. They have to host the Steelers. They have to go to Atlanta. That's an 0-5 start that they will not be able to get up from. 5-11 and 11 for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Carolina Panthers 8-8 eight and eight. again. It was tough. I had to make cuts, man. And it, it sucked, but I had to do it. And the Panthers are one of those teams that got cut. NFC just so damn tough right now. You had to be strict, and I had to take away some, some wins from the Carolina Panthers, but they're still going to compete for the playoffs all year, just fall uh, short late. NFC West, Seattle Seahawks 7-9. So, this is actually better than 
and I see a lot of people giving them. People, they still have Russell Wilson. He's a top five quarterback in this league. He, they sh he should be able to go at least seven and nine. It's going to be very similar to when the Saints used to go seven and nine, right? They might remember they went like seven and nine, three set years. It's going to be like that. And although I think the defense will be a little bit better than the Saints was, and the offense for the Seahawks will be a little bit worse as they won't be able to run the damn football, right? But give me the Seahawks at seven and nine, but obviously no more playoffs with the Seahawks for the next couple of years until they can regroup defensively. San Francisco 49ers, nine and seven. Yes, I had to take away a win. I think Jerry McKinnon was worth a win because now we're talking about Alfred Morris starting at the running back position. Jesus Christ, Alfred Morris, who was the running mate for RG3 during his rookie year. That was 2012. It's been six years since then, and he hasn't done anything since then. Now, he was decent in backup duty for Ezekiel Elliott, but there's a difference between backup duty and starting, and we saw that when he had to start a little bit uh, in his stead. Okay, so we're going to see, but I'm not I'm not optimistic when it comes to 49ers running game right now, and that had to ding down a win for me. Arizona Cardinals, 5 and 11 yes i'm sorry this is the worst record i gave in the nfc and i just don't see how they're not the worst team in the nfc right now i mean you could argue maybe the redskins maybe the giants but after that man it's the cardinals they're just one of the worst teams in the nfc right now in the afc they might go 8 and 8 they might go even 9 and 7 but in the nfc come on look around they're the worst team in the NFC right now. And then Los Angeles Rams at 11 and five. I gave them an extra win. They look good in the preseason. They look ready to go. Their schedule is still looking difficult, but I think they're gonna manage 11 and five for the LA Rams. So there you go. Those are my win loss predictions for each and every team in the NFL. That's 256 wins, 256 losses. It's mathematically sound. It was tough to do and I'm gonna be wrong. And really what happens when I'm wrong is a couple of these teams are gonna get injuries and they're gonna be done. A team I'm expecting to go 9-7, they're going to lose a quarterback and go 3-13. So those six wins, right, are going to be dispersed throughout the league. So don't be surprised if you win a couple more games than I'm projecting here because obviously I'm not projecting injuries. So keep that in mind, okay, whenever we're watching the season or whenever we evaluate after the season, that normally is the case. I'm just off by one or two wins because injuries allow teams to be a little bit better than we thought they were going to be. Until next time, this has been MJ of Sports Fan Entertainment. Let's sit back and watch some damn football. I'm out. Peace.